I always cry after an epic edit. Uh, this vlog 6 is dedicated to Sharon Chin, uh, my new good friend from Malaysia, uh, who was the other artist in residence, and if you've been watching the vlogs, then you know who Sharon is. Open Studio, uh, which is basically uh, the exhibition we had here in Sapporo in our studios uh, for the public, and it opened last Friday, and um, it was open on Saturday and Sunday and we just packed down yesterday so it's been quite a full-on weekend. Um, I'm just going to talk ab about uh, the work that Sharon made uh, because yeah I'd yeah, rather talk about Sharon's work actually and so share with you um, people back home and whoever about the project she made in Sapporo which I really really enjoyed that project um, and it really engaged with the community and I think she ex executed it quite well and successfully um, and a lot of people enjoyed participating. Uh, so, from the beginning, uh, Sharon, uh, there's a bridge next to where we live, Horo Hirabashi Bridge, so um, every day we cross the bridge to go to the studio, and uh, yeah, Sharon really likes the bridge, and she, you know, she loves water, so it goes over a, a main river here, Toyo, Toyo Hira River, Horo Hira River. Um, and um, she discovered all of these messages, uh, you know, written on, on the bridge kind of railing. And um, they were like kind of messages of, you know, love messages and hope messages. Like some people had written like, oh, I hope I pass my exam for university entrance tomorrow. And, and like kind of sweet things like that. So she kind of used that as the starting platform for her work and um, developed a kind of performance uh, based around this idea because in Sapporo there's not much tagging um, actually there's, there's like nearly zero tagging there's, there's no graffiti and, and you know in really small pockets you see it but, um, so that's why I think it was interesting to her this writing on the bridge and messages and things like that uh, she uh, what she did was she produced two books a white book and a black book uh, one was sunrise and one was sunset and she had photographed the length of the bridge um, at sunrise and at sunset so she had two of these books kind of you know replica of the images inside them bound you know kind of nicely bound and um, and the 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 project was uh, with the two books is that with these images and with the blank spaces of the railing um, she got people to participate in her performance which was uh, people writing um, messages onto these photographs sort of like filling the gaps um, and how she communicated you know how she executed that was she had um, people would draw on her back like a message a word or a picture and she would translate that at the same time by sitting you know there with her pen and drawing onto the photograph so it's kind of like this kind of fun like kind of you know child childhood kind of activity, but uh, that's how she she got the, the words or the pictures onto the images, and then she she de uh, well decked out her studio with these images with uh, lots of people that she had did the performance with, and she had also did uh, had this performance running during open studio, um, and she had done that there and also in public places and different events. Uh, so she has a collection of. Of, of these images and drawings uh, scrawled around her her studio space and each person that she had a uh, performance did a performance with uh, they would draw on her back she would write and then they'd swip, uh, switch and then the person would um, be writing she's drawing on their back and she had documented it with Polaroids and um, match those images together around the studio space and what she's going to do now is send those uh, those photographs and those Polaroids back to the participants and she gets them to write on the back of the image uh, their address and um, yeah so what I really liked about them why I think I really enjoy the, the process of Sharon's work is that she um, you know and I think it was we had a similar idea where we really wanted to engage with the community in some way and um, and I thought that was a really nice project and even though like both of us couldn't speak Japanese and you know she was she was still able to to um, to pull off her project which was great
Starting. Hey, Janet and everybody who's watching. I'm Sharon. Uh, and we're at Zuka Cafe. It's a beautiful sunny day. You can see the sunlight streaming through the window. Um, so while I was here, I was reading this book while waiting for Janet. It's called Puburuan, uh, which means hunting or hunt hunted uh, by Pramoja Anantator. He's a great Indonesian writer who passed away recently. Um, so yeah, about language. I yeah, since being in Japan, where I can't really I know about twenty Japanese words, um, I've started really embracing uh, my own national language, which is Bahasa Malaysia. And uh, yeah, I find that just being here, being out of my own context, has given me the confidence to claim uh, language as my own, and that's been really amazing for me. <laughs> Um, so that's just symbolic of all the good things that have happened to me here. Uh, one of which is definitely meeting Janet. Um, yeah, strange how people also can give you confidence. Uh, because they just, it's like a mirror. They kind of reflect uh, the best parts of yourself. And you can see yourself a little more clearly. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too much? <laughs> no, no, it's all good. The fiery ring Bound by wild desire I fell into a ring of fire I fell into a burning ring of fire I went down, down, down And the flames went higher and it burns, burns, burns The ring of fire The ring of fire I fell into a burning ring of fire I went down, 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 and the flames went higher, and it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire, and it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire.